Hey, I came up with two examples to explain to you that Western civilization is a Ponzi scheme. Well, I don't mean that Western civilization itself is a Ponzi scheme, but the economies of the West are certainly based on pyramid schemes or Ponzi schemes. A Ponzi scheme is where the first people who participate, they win some benefits, but those benefits are paid for by the people who join the scheme later. The last people, which is usually most people who join these schemes, end up losing everything and never win any benefits. Only the early adopters win. The same is true for several aspects of Western economies. And I want to highlight two examples that I came up with. One is the housing pricing in the Netherlands, meaning what determines the price of a house in the Netherlands, in Europe. And the other example is what determines the cost of higher education in the United States. And you'll find that both of these examples rest on the same principle, which is a Ponzi scheme. So let's start with the example in the Netherlands. What determines the cost or the price of a house in the Netherlands? Normally, as a normal person, I would think that the cost of construction, the cost of the plot, the plot of land, and the, uh, the hours of work put in, the man hours put in, that the combination of these three factors, perhaps also location, people are willing to pay for location, and perhaps how nice it really is, like subjectively, how nice is the house? Does it have, you know, the golden bathroom or something? Uh, those factors, I believe, would be what determine the price of a house. But those factors have nothing, nothing to do with the price of a house in the Netherlands. Housing prices are determined as follows. In the Netherlands, most people cannot afford to buy a house off the bat because they don't have enough savings. But usually people will have jobs, jobs that have a certain projected income for the next 40 years or so. So these people go to a bank to get a mortgage loan. To say this is how it works in most of the modern world, people will have to get a loan from a bank. But what is really a loan from a bank? What is a mortgage loan? How does the bank figure out how much you can borrow? Well, banks figure this out by looking at your projected incomes of you and your spouse, and they, they calculate how much they expect in all likelihood that you can earn, and that determines basically the ceiling of what you can borrow. But here's the thing. The housing prices adjust to what, whatever it is that people can afford. So say if the average Dutch couple can make uh, can get a mortgage loan for about 300,000 euros at one point, then the average cost of a house in the Netherlands will also be 300,000 euros. Now imagine 20 years later that the average Dutch couple could afford 400,000 euros based on their projected incomes. Their incomes have increased. Now, do you think houses will still be 300,000 euros? No, the houses now increase to also costing on average 400,000 euros. But this increase, this increase in 100,000 euros, okay, part of it is inflation. But the point is that the price of a house does not represent the cost of the building or the plot or the location or how nice it is or, or, or the man hours, the hours of work put in to, to build it. These things may represent the, the lower end, like the, uh, the floor of the price, like the minimum price, but the actual price you pay is far greater than the value of the house itself. I tried to explain this already in another, in another clip I made for TikTok, where I explained that housing costs are often made up of, say, anywhere between 30 to 50% is the actual cost, the actual value of the house. But then anywhere from 50 to 70%, you are literally just paying for hot air. You are paying a bullshit sum. You are literally paying for the right to live in this house, but you are overpaying by 50 to 70%. I'll give you an example. In the Netherlands, if you build your own house through your own manual labor and the help of your friends, you can build a house that is worth, say, 200,000 euros, meaning the cost of the building materials and the man hours put in is 200,000 euros plus the plot. It, this includes the plot. But as soon as you finish building your house, you can sell it off for 400 to 450, maybe even 500,000 euros. Huh? How did that happen? How come the price of the house is now more than double of the cost you put in to have it constructed? 
The answer is that in the Dutch housing market, through the mortgage system, people are overpaying for a house by over 50%. 50% of the price of a house in the Netherlands is hot air. The, the air blowing through your house is half of the cost. Why do people do it? Why are people willing to do it? Because they want to live in the Netherlands, so they will get the mortgage they can get based on their incomes, and they will spend the full loan on that house which, and the housing prices and therefore adjust to whatever it is that people can afford. The same principle applies to the cost of higher education in the USA. It's a bit different in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, the cost of higher education is capped. So it's like 5,000 euros a year for everyone. But in the USA, it's not capped. In the USA, what exactly determines the cost of going to an Ivy League university, say Harvard or Columbia? I don't know the exact annual fees by heart, but let's say it's $35,000. Why is it $35,000? It's $35,000 because there is one institution that lends you the money, that borrows you the money, and they look at your education and your projected incomes from the sort of jobs that people get after graduating from Harvard or Brown or Berkeley or Yale, right? And so they calculate that you should be able to afford 35,000 years in annual fees. It's probably much more than that, right? It's probably much more than that. I'm not an American, so I don't know the exact cost. But here's the thing. As jobs make more money, and again, inflation may be involved, but as jobs over time, say from 1980 to 2000 to 2020, as jobs make more and more money, the, the amount of money you can borrow therefore also increases. And as a result of that, the cost of higher education simply adjusts to whatever you can borrow. If you could borrow $100,000 in 1990, then your education fee was maybe $25,000 a year. Uh, and if you, but now if you can borrow $200,000, oh, now your fee is all of a sudden $50,000 uh, uh, a year. The reason, what I'm trying to explain is that this is actually a Ponzi scheme. Why is it a Ponzi scheme? Because at some point, the job, jobs are going to stagnate. People graduating from Ivy Leagues end up having jobs that make them 40K a year, 50K a year. And that is nowhere near enough to repay the loans you had to get to get those educations, meaning that the education no longer lives up to its name. The higher education from an Ivy League, you graduated from Harvard, and you can get a job, and it's, ah, I'm making 50K a year. Uh, lots of academic intellectuals make like, less than 50K a year in the U.S. today. So a lot of these jobs that you get from higher education no longer pay for the higher education. Higher education, as a consequence, the loans you can get have to drop. And as a consequence of that, the cost of education will come down. But now there are a lot of people who have paid the high price for this high education, and they realize that now in the economy, in the economic reality that we are living in, they find out that they're not going to have high grossing jobs. The same thing in the Netherlands, uh, as, as jobs go down, job incomes go down, uh, that means people can borrow fewer money from the banks. The mortgage, the mortgage loans will be smaller, uh, meaning they go down from 400K average to maybe 250K average. But now all of a sudden, people who previously purchased a highly costly house, say they, they bought the house at an average price of 400 thousand euros in the in the Netherlands, all of a sudden their houses drop in value. The houses that are now on sale on average will be say 300,000 euros. And that means because the job, per, the prospective job income is going down, the loans people can get are going down and the price of the house adjusts itself to whatever people could loan, remember. So the average housing price represents the average loan you can get based on your projected income. But if the incomes go down, the loans go down, then the prices of the houses go down. But what about those people who paid the high price previously in the previous years before the collapse? What about them? Well, they're stuck. They still have to pay off a 400,000 euro mortgage for a house that is now worth on the open market only 300,000 euros. They've burnt through 100K. They've lost 100K that they will never get back. This is a Ponzi scheme. Why? Because the newcomers who now want to join this market, they're not going to. They realize that the houses are way more expensive if the price keeps going down. Then why would you buy a house realizing that the price is going down? You're just going to lose money. So they're not going to buy houses. And the people who have 
who still have houses won't be able to sell them. You see what this is? It's the, the last group of people who paid the highest price for the housing are the ones who are going to lose the most. And the same is true for higher education in the United States. Those people who paid, who previously paid the highest annual fees for their Ivy League education are going to find out that there are no more jobs that will earn them enough to pay it back. But they still have to pay it back because they still acquired those loans. Okay, the Biden administration says they now want to um, give people money, right, to pay back their loans. But in reality, what you're really doing is there's a whole group of people who are in, unable now to pay back their loans. So Biden gives them taxpayer money, and that taxpayer money, of course, flows right back to the creditors who once issued those loans. So in effect, this Biden program is a way to take taxpayers' money and give it to the, uh, to the creditors who issued the student loans. Why is this wrong? Why is it really wrong? Because who are the taxpayers paying for paying to pay off the student loans, those are usually taxpayers who did not go to university, who did not go to college. Like blue collar workers now basically are being punished for, for it. Their money, their taxes are now taken away from them. They're not used for better schools or better housing. No, they take the blue collar workers money to pay off students loans for people who cannot find jobs after going to Harvard. That is, all of that is a sign of economies collapsing. This is a Ponzi scheme, and the people who paid the highest prices are about to lose the most.